Welcome everybody to our feature segment of this edition of Forward Capital Crusaders. And in this podcast, our feature segment is probably one of the most highlighted and most anticipated feature segments that we've had thus far. And we would like to introduce to you and help to get to know the interim president of Capital University, Mr. Dave Kaufman. President Kaufman, thank you so much for joining us today. This is an absolute pleasure for me and I think for the rest of the CAP fam. So thank you for your time. And I know it's been a little bit of an unceremonious inauguration, but I know quite a few people want to take the time to get to know you. So can you give a little bit of an elevator speech? Uh, that describes you and where you most recently come from? Yeah, Ryan, I appreciate the opportunity to, to join you today. And um, yeah, I come here the last eight years, I was CEO of what is now Encova Mutual Insurance Group. And that ended really a 30 year career with Encova. And um, across the, the last eight years, there is really about uniting 16 companies and under one banner, which is Encova. So we took 16 companies combined as one united under shared values. And, and across that process, um, we doubled the revenue and doubled the net worth and really positioned the company to compete going forward. So I was just really blessed to be part of a, a superior leadership team. And uh, we build trust and, um, and executed results. And it was just a, a really good experience. So that's what I've been doing the last eight years. Now, you don't exactly come to us from a faraway land. You're a, a Columbus native. You've been here for a while. Where exactly do you call home here in the Columbus area? And we're in Worthington Hills, have been there through my whole career. I've got three daughters, so they all went through Worthington Hills Elementary to um, McCord to Kilbourne High School, and then three, three different universities. So that is home. I grew up in uh, Bell Fountain, just an hour northwest of here, went to Ohio Wesleyan University. So Central Ohio has been uh, the, the foundation of, of me and my family. I did spend some time in uh, Connecticut, uh, Louisville, and Minneapolis, but never really um, drifted too far from, from this being being the, the home for my family. So Capital University is no stranger to you. You've at least seen us in headlines or maybe even drove by campus a, a couple of times. So, you know, can you go over the progression of your career from jumping into the job market to as an actuary, as you describe it? And I have no idea what that is. So you're going to have to educate me there. Um, and then you, you know, become a financial analyst, analyst, which I'm a little bit more familiar with that term. But, you know, just talk about how you've made that progression from the beginning of your career to where you are now. Yeah, it's kind of a, an, an odd, um, I guess, an odd path. I went to Wesleyan, uh, double majored in math and economics thinking I was going to coach basketball and teach math. And then my senior year, I started taking some interviews, think I'd go get an MBA at the University of Chicago, math and economics aligned me for that. So I just took an interview with Connecticut General just to, for the experience of the interview, went to um, Connecticut in Hartford and met with, they said, man, you'd be a perfect fit for our actuarial program. And like you, I didn't know what an actuary was. So I learned, and it was um, really, it did align with the math and economics. It's about a, a seven year commitment to get through the, the credentials. Um, and I could do that um, working, making money as opposed to taking on more debt and getting an MBA. But what's kind of interesting is uh, I interviewed on a Friday and they saw my background that I, I was in a sport at Ohio Wesley and they asked if I played um, softball and what position I was a shortstop. Well, they had a corporate team, their shortstop was hurt so they asked if I could stay over the weekend and, and I ended up playing with the team and kind of developed some relationships there. And that kind of created kind of the, I guess, the whole energy to, I went with Connecticut General in Hartford, pursued the actual career. And that really kind of opened up a lot of the professional opportunities I, I had going forward. One thing I learned with that is I was more acclimated to um, leadership, people, management, and most actuaries um, are a little more quantitative. They're they, they shift and focus more technically. And so what I found is with that um, quantitative background and the, the leadership interest that really aligned me well for, for some of the opportunities that came to me through, through business and management. So you were their ringer and you turned that into a business. <laughs> no, I was, I was not a ringer. They, <laughs> but it was, it was funny though, how, um, you know, the, the camaraderie that, that you establish so quickly when you're competing and, and part of a team, you know, it was a, it was a Saturday, Sunday um, weekend tournament. And it just was interesting to me just to see how the bonding through that um, really uh, made me, hey, I wanna take this opportunity. And, and some of the coworkers through that experience have, are still lifelong friends. Well, we in athletics can certainly relate that how those kinds of opportunities can parlay into more opportunities. 
And speaking of opportunities, can you think of one that, whether it be an internship or a, a big time job or life experience that really put into motion the rest of your career? You know, um, I can think one, one person comes to mind. His name was um, Mr. McGilvery. He owned a Ford dealership in Bellefountain, Ohio, where I grew up. If you right at the time I was graduating from high school, Honda was just um, their factory was just going, their plant was going online, but right out at Marysville. And I bet two thirds of my graduating class was joining Honda and getting on the ground floor there. And that was my plans. So out of the blue, this guy calls me up and, and he said, I'm concerned you don't have plans to go to college. And I, I am the first generation in my family to, to go. And so he said, he goes, you know, I, I, I saw you play basketball and I, I know your grades. I think you might be good enough to, to go to my alma mater, which is Ohio Wesleyan. So he took a day, took me over, met the basketball coach and, and the team. And long story short, I got accepted, um, went to Wesleyan. So the, so one, and, he, and the irony of the whole story is Mr. McGilvery passed away fall term of my freshman year. So he spent one day in my life. I never got the opportunity to thank him. And him taking that one day, you know, changed the whole trajectory of, of, of mine from really being at Honda with a lot of um, friends that I grew up with to a, a whole different path that led to, to CEO at Encova and now uh, this, this opportunity at Capital. A pretty, pretty unique. It is, absolutely. One day can change the momentum of an entire life. We're here with the interim president of Capital University, Mr. David Kaufman. And so... President Kaufman, you've earned a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Griffith Insurance Educational Foundation, uh, serving as the CEO for multiple organizations and a board member for many, many more. Why take an interest in higher education and why Capital University? Well, the, um, so my, my insurance career as an executive was, um, was coming to an end. You know, um, I'd reached a point where a lot of the board commitments um, uh, were concluding. And in COVA, we had rebranded as in COVA about a year ahead of, ahead of time. So as I stepped out of that, um, I was really looking for a new challenge. I, coming from Ohio Wesleyan, and I'm, um, I experienced the D3 athletics and the liberal arts um, um, education. And a lot of my, my team, my leadership team at Encova and the other companies had a similar background. So I saw the, the power of that. But I also was aware of the, the headwinds of higher education and some of the challenges around, you know, the private institutions and, and um, the capital, capital type universities. So um, I also have um, probably five pretty close friends that came through capital or through the law school. So I also was always impressed with the quality of education and, and, and more than that, their experience at capital. So that was part of the attraction. And then just seeing some of the, the challenges, I thought it would be a, a good challenge to, I saw where um, capital, the significant impact it has on Central Ohio. I was aware of some of the challenges faced, not just by capital, but, but all universities this size. And my hope was that maybe some of my corporate experience I could you know, employ here and, and maybe help us um, transition through this to a, to a really good competitive place. So that was the attraction. And, and um, I tell you, through three months here, it's, um, it's really validated, a good choice. And I'm really enjoying it. And also seeing um, um, the bright side you know, we have. I'm starting to see the strategies come in place. And, and I think our future is very bright despite some of the headwinds right now. As you mentioned, you've been on the job for three months. What have you learned specifically about Capital University or the people that comprise it that has uh, made you optimistic or just what you've learned in general? I, and one thing that really jumps out is the passion whether it's the faculty, the staff, the alumni, the students, um, that is it, the passion around Capital University um, jumps out. And I think the, um, the, the commitment to the student experience of everyone, you know, we are facing a lot of unknowns now, a lot of challenges. And, and what's taken me back is just um, faculty will um, roll up their sleeves, jump in and fill gaps, do things that, that, that just need to be done. I see staff the same way, caring for the students. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty there, just that that care is real apparent. So I think what, what really jumps out at me is that that superior student experience that that we talk about, I'm witnessing. And man, that is a strong foundation when it's real. That gives us something really to advertise and, and recruit to. So I think that that passion and, and that student focus and the, the, the resources around the student success is has really, um, I knew it was strong, but not as, as strong as, as what I've, I've experienced since I've been here. 
Now, you came to Capitol at a, a pretty hectic time with everything that was going on nationwide as well as institutionally, and, and it still is to a degree. But what do you feel in three months that you've been here, you've felt good about accomplishing? I think um, maybe I'm kind of taking a strategy, structure, people approach. And so I spent the, um, the first really 90 days listening and learning trying to get as familiar as I can with, with our challenges, um, with our key stakeholder groups. And, and I've learned tremendous about that. You know, where are we at? Um, what are some of the aspirations? And then spent a lot of time just strategically, you know, looking, we really have to, um, my job is to communicate and articulate an, an aspiring future. You know, what's the vision? I'm getting pretty close to that, Ryan. So we've, we've got six strategies that are like two-year strategies that are really the umbrella of everything we're doing. So my thinking is that's in place now, it's been articulated and we're starting to see some, some action supporting them. While at the same time, I've, I've um, got a cabinet form that I really love. I mean, a very capable team of 10 that represent all aspects of the university. We're, we meet together an hour and a half every week. So I'm starting to see the trust and the camaraderie build there. And what comes out of that is usually some really good execution. So um, I think that's probably the, the biggest achievement is here's the, the strategy, the direction, and the formation of a, of a team, a solid leadership team that with a, a foundation of trust. So we're really positioned, I think, to start, start moving forward a little more aggressively. Now, I know that it's really hard to not want to just come in and make all kinds of changes. And, and I've heard that sometimes the best change is the one that's not so abrupt, but over the course of time is slowly seen. But if there's one piece of low hanging fruit that you might be willing to take on here in year one, what do you think that might be? I, I'm not sure that um, low hanging fruits, right? But I, I think the, um, the number one priority is um, establishing a foundation of trust. You know, that, that is to me, that is, we have got to, um, from, from the whole CAP fam community, as it takes a while for a new leader to come in because no one knows, well, maybe I'm just going to start um, taking action, you know, and, and reacting to short-term things. And that's really not my style. So the listen and learn is all part of, of creating that foundation of trust. And it slows us down a little bit, but with that foundation, that means that we'll get the understanding and the ownership of the things that have to happen and the trust and teamwork to, to make it happen. So, so that's probably my focus is that, that foundation of trust more than any one little um, low hanging fruit or, or individual initiative. And if you had a couple of maybe two, three, or multi-year uh, objectives that you would like to accomplish, can you give us a little bit of a tease as far as maybe down the road what you would like to accomplish? I think it's really um, defining what um, distinguishes us, what distinguishes capital from the larger universities and some of our smaller peers that um, we can articulate in a way um, students and the community can, can respond to, because I, I see what we offer here and the campus experience, the, um, the value of being on a team, those I've experienced it, I see it, but how do you articulate it and market it? I think is a challenge, but it can be done. So I think that the focus is really being able to distinguish what, what, is, um, what distinguishes capital, what do we offer that others don't? and then be able to articulate that in a way that um, there's, there's an energy to it. And part of that can come with, um, one thing I do bring is a lot of relationships to corporate Columbus and Central Ohio. And I think building on those relationships um, with the university and corporate Columbus, and even partnering with some of the other universities and, and sharing complimentary offerings. Um, I'm already seeing a lot of that starting to the collaboration happening. So, so that's what I'd like to see is just, um, is just that, getting our story out there Everyone's seeing that, that, that we are different. It distinguishes us, it's sustainable, and then, um, and then making it happen through those collaborations. We're here with interim President Dave Kaufman here at Capital University on this edition of Forward Capital Crusaders. And President Kaufman, we're gonna now start to unpack some of your sports background because we know that you're kind of a sports guy. Uh, you were a student at Ohio Wesleyan, as you mentioned, and a member of the Bishops basketball team. So let's go down that road. Um, what, let's first back it up a little bit and say, and ask what sport allegiances do you have to either sports or sports teams? Okay, I am, for, you're right, I'm a sports fanatic. My whole family is, my, my daughters are, my wife. Um, 
I would say that if I'm going to watch anything, I'd probably say college football would be first, college basketball would be second, probably pro football next, um, maybe golf and the NBA. I'm more of a LeBron fan than an NBA fan. But, um, but generally, I, I enjoy them all. You know, in the season's in, you know, the, the Blue Jackets and hockey, I like going to the games, like seeing them live. Um, I uh, grew up a Browns fan and a Reds fan. That's what my dad was. So there's been some, been a long pull as, as a Browns fan and some, some moments as a Reds fan. But, but right now, things are good. We're four and one, right? So, um, but that, that's kind of, um, you know, it's been more of a, a Ohio-centric um, I, I guess we're the Buckeye Nation. My wife's an Ohio State grad as um, CEO of Vancova. We, um, we supported Ohio State very closely. So just going to bowl games and all that, you, you, it's hard not to get caught up into the Buckeye Nation when you're, when you're in that role and, and living in central Ohio. Well, then you've had a pretty good sports season. I mean, you just saw LeBron James win another championship with the Lakers. The Reds made the postseason and the Browns are looking pretty good. So life as a sports fan for you has to be pretty nice right now. Yeah, life is good, but but there's still my golf game. <laughs> the slice and the hook. So <laughs> you, you can always, if if using me as a uh, you know course of measurement, you're always going to be better than me. There, putt <laughs> my game. So you got you got me beat at the very minimum. Now we've had a long wait for live sports to return, and we're in the thick of a lot of championships, and and really on the cusp of other sports seasons beginning, but of all the ones that you've enjoyed watching or even plan to watch, what has your utmost attention right now? I'd say probably college football. Just, um, you know, the Big Ten is a couple weeks away from starting. We've had um, three or four weeks of the SEC and some of the other conferences. And so I'm just real anxious to see, um, can we sustain it with the pandemic um, concerns? And then um, how will the, the Big Ten integrate into, you know, kind of the, the season's already well, well underway. So I think those are some really interesting dynamics, especially for the coaches, you know, how do you prepare? And, and I think it's also interesting to watch the SEC like this weekend and see how far behind the offenses, the defenses are, you know, when you're seeing teams score combined 90 to hundred points, I mean, that's not SEC football in the past. So I, I find that interesting, but I, I'm real, um, real excited to see how the, how the big 10, how they look, you know, the first couple of weeks compared to the teams that have been been competing a little bit longer. And we'll get into college football in just a little bit later here in this interview. But for right now, let's talk more about you. You mentioned that you're an avid sportsman and you actually partake in a lot of different activities. Uh, among those is your golf game that you say that you're, you continue to work on. Uh, I hear that you're a skier and even a tennis player. So tell us about some of the activities uh, and maybe even grade yourself in them. That's yeah, so right now probably golf is would be my favorite I would say um, I'm a 12 handicap so kind of a bogey golfer you know 80 to 85 is is what I shoot and it seems kind of hopeless to get below that but I'm, but I'm still working at it um, the uh, my wife is a, an exceptional downhill skier so she's been skiing since she was three um, our honeymoon was in um, Aspen so I learned to ski you know through that so so that's a, a big part of it and I it's kind of neat too to see she is so much better than me at that sport, you know. So that, that's kind of kind of a neat competitive uh, angle there too. On tennis, um, it's really platform tennis. I play that in the winter. I learned that since living in Worthington Hills. So you actually play outside and cold in the snow. So it's a it's kind of unique and and it's more of a camaraderie. I got a lot of friends that play it, so I, I go really for for that as much as the sport. And one thing that's interesting, my three daughters and my wife, um, everybody runs marathons. So um, she's run a number of them, um, all my daughters have, and, and I've run four, but it's been more just out of, um, running was always my, my stress management. And then to share that with, um, you know, with, with my family has been special. So, but again, nothing, you know, it's kind of survive the four hour run as opposed to setting any records or anything, so. Fair enough. I'm, I'm, I, can, uh, I can relate. So if you're talking about favorite courses or maybe some resorts that you've uh, skied at, what are some of your favorites that you'd suggest to us? I would say uh, skiing would be the back bowls at Vail, where the snow was mid-thigh and just really unique conditions. Um, golf, um, I just came back with, um, there was eight of us, went to Bandon Dunes. And um, originally it was going to be a trip around an Ohio State-Oregon football game. And when the football game was canceled, we, we kept the trip. So it's kind of part of uh, my retirement also. But that just, uh, it's a slice of heaven. Uh, Band and Dunes, when you're you know, along the ocean, the edge of Oregon, and uh, five just fabulous courses, and that's all you're doing. Um, it was uh, pretty special. So I'd, I'd go back. 
All right. Highly recommended. Give it the Dave Cullen stamp of approval then. <laughs> now mentioned that you were a member of the men's basketball team at the Wesleyan. Can you give us a little bit of a rundown of your collegiate playing career? What uh, positions you played, maybe your style, and maybe even a few accolades or numbers that you hang your hat on? Yeah. Well, there's, there's no numbers to, to hang my hat on, <laughs> but I would say um, I was a point guard um, and uh, all, all four years. Um, Frank Shannon was the, the coach my freshman year, Gene Mahaffey the other three years. So I went through a coaching change there. And I was, um, the, the team was kind of um, 500. And um, I was a, I'd play maybe a quarter to half the game. I was a captain, but there was a, there was a point guard better than me. So I was kind of the, the substitute for him and, and support to him. So, um, so no record career there, but, but I'll tell you what, the um, being a captain and, and just the whole camaraderie around the, you know, the sport and the competitiveness and the, and the teamwork was a, a really special experience. It actually, um, and it's one thing I'm big with, with capital here, a lot of those skills transferred, you know, in, into the, the corporate challenges that I had, but, but it was a great experience at Wesleyan. And wasn't at the time too, they, it wasn't so much basketball as around soccer and lacrosse was, you know, they were um, competing for national titles in those two sports, as opposed to some of the traditional ones. Very good. Now you mentioned that, you know, some of the things that you learned as an athlete kind of translated into a post-collegiate career. Can you go into depth a little bit more about what your time as a student athlete did for you and your professional career? Uh, yeah, I would say um, first leadership, you know, um, especially being a captain, a lot of the elements of leading a team, uh, uh, you know, correlates to uh, leading an organization. It's about trust and execution and, you know, communication. Um, teamwork, um, now you see uh, most of, of corporate America has gone to teams, integrated teams. And, and you can tell when you're working those that have experience being part of a team as those that don't, you know, knowing your role, can, committing to something bigger than you and, and some of those elements, I think, um, you learn to the goal achievement, you know, how critical goals are and having to overcome obstacles to achieve them. You know, all those were, um, were, were critical. Uh, even, and, and maybe time management was one of the, the, the key things. So when you think about, I remember the practices, the games and a full schedule of, of academics. And now as a, as a CEO and as, and as a president and manager, I mean, that time management is critical. You know, really knowing we're all pulled with, um, you got important and urgent things and urgent things and how do you make sure you don't get lost here and really manage your time so you're, you're focused on the urgent things that move the needle? So no, no different than, than your team and the competitive drive with the team is very consistent with the competitive drive of a university or a company. Very good. Now, we're going to go back and we're going to give you a mulligan, so to say, on maybe of your uh, past playing career. But if there was a sport that you wish that you could have tried or maybe trained a little bit more or maybe even you still want to try to pick up, what would that sport be? I would say probably lacrosse. So um, my high school did not have a lacrosse program. So when I went to Wesleyan as a basketball player, um, a lot of my friends there were lacrosse players. So that's really when I really got exposed to it. And I, I really, really liked it. It seemed like it had some, some elements um, strategically like basketball, but some of the physicality more of football. And, and so it's a sport that I never really got an opportunity to, to play and compete in that I think really aligned with some of the skills I had. So I think that'd be it. I'd, I'd um, somehow figure out how to get involved with that in high school and, and see what that might've turned into. Well, if you talk to head coach Don Marzano long enough, he might put a stick in your hand and try to get you out there. So, yeah, one year, that was good. <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's something. Now, would you be a goaltender, a forward, a, you know, a goal scorer, a defender? What, what do you think? I'd say I'd be a, um, I'd have to be a, a defender at this point, no doubt. <laughs> Fair enough. We, we take, take the shots. There you go. We're here with interim president of Capital University, Mr. Dave Kaufman. Now let's mix sports and business. COVID has obviously been dominating the headlines nationally as well as here at the institution. How do you feel that Capital's COVID response has panned out both to student athletes and the larger campus population alike? I think from the, the larger campus population, I, I'm proud of what we've done and all the, the time that has gone into the safety precautions, the, the protocols, um, on the campus overall, and then you look at with the NCAA, the, the staging and phasing is, is the student athletes return to campus. I mean, there's a lot of complexity, a lot of unknown. Um, and I've been really um, pleased both with how prepared we were. And now you look at this point in time and looking 
back how effective it's been. So really pleased with that. You know, we decided to um, go the first month virtual in the classroom before the students and student athletes joined campus. And I, and that was controversial and a difficult decision, but looking back, I'm really pleased with that because we could learn from some of the other schools. And, uh, and I think we are better prepared um, than we might otherwise have been with without having done that. So, you know, that's one of these things we monitor daily. I think we're set up to kind of sense and respond what we need to do. But at this point, really pleased with, um, you know, our stats have been outstanding compared to other universities. So I think that shows that our students are, are being disciplined and um, complying with the protocols in place, which is difficult. I mean, it changes the student experience, no doubt. But I've been um, real, real pleased and, and compliment them on their support in, in making this happen because it takes all of us. It really takes all of us to, um, to you know, to pull this off. Now, and you are the president, you're on the president's council for the Ohio Athletic Conference. And we won't get too deep into the trenches about what and how the decisions were made in the interest of athletics and public health. But when you partake in these conversations, what are the some what are some of the things that you personally navigate when trying to come up with proposals for deliberation? Well, you know, it's interesting because we're we're a conference of 10. But all ten have their own uniqueness, and and um, and I think we have some unique considerations that maybe the other nine don't have. So I always go in with that mindset, kind of. Um, I want to be part of the conference, but also representative of our specific needs and and desires. But um, and so I'm new into that, you know, just um, three months into it. But what I found is um is a is a team. Safety is the number one thing. To, I mean, that trumped everything else, which I was pleased to see, you know, so um, when you look at the, the competitive drive of the different universities and different sports that that safety trumped everything else. Um, I was really pleased to hear that. And then it really got into that part of the challenge was the NCAA brought out so much criteria from gating to phasing and how do you introduce the student athletes back on campus. It's it's drawn out and pretty um, sophisticated. So then you get into, well, how practical is that? What's that experience actually like? And um, we spent a lot of time on that. What, you know, we want to deliver that student experience. And man, there's a lot of um, obstacles and, and considerations now. And maybe the third thing was just the, the financial sustainability of it. You know, when you look at the tests we're doing and, and um, all the protocols put in place, it's a, it's a balancing act. So I, what I found is with the presidents, it seems from safety to practicality to cost. Those, those three things all seem to come into play. And then what's, what's unique to the um, student athlete on, on each campus. And um, you know, we have different schedules, calendars and that. And, and I found it good that, that everyone kind of, um, okay, I'll give in because it's in the best interest of the student athlete on, at, at that university, even though maybe the other university doesn't benefit from it. So I've, I've really appreciate and respect that. And we certainly look forward to some of the decisions that are made and the actions that result from those discussions as we await the return to sport. But in speaking of that, uh, what are your feelings that, uh, you know, athletics has a role to play at an institution? What do you feel is athletics role in the uh, play of an academic institution? Well, actually, I think it's critical, especially for um, capital. I think it's it in, in part, uh, differentiate us. Um, offering, you know, I, I shared that my experience, you know, what did I learn, you know, from time management to leadership, to goal achievement, you know, teamwork, you know, all those, all those skills, overcoming obstacles, every student athlete that participates in the sport uh, learns from that. They have role models from their coaches, you know, there's, there's one-on-one -on -one mentoring. That's all part of, of athletics, which I think are key to developing all of us to, to, excel in whatever we choose to do. So I think that's critical. And I also think that, you know, so, so the individual student athlete benefits from that, but then you look at the university and, and I picture since that's what differentiates us, we need to be recruiting more student athletes. So I think it can be a, a real um, asset to help recruit our enrollment um, and help us, you know, even financially from the, the numbers that come in with the experience, the, you know, the personal academic social uh, development that, that we offer. And then I also think from the, the cap fam and, and, you know, when you're rallying around teams, you got the, the spirit, the vibrancy on, on campus from everyone being involved in some kind of, of you know, co-curricular activity. There's an energy to that. And, um, and that is, can be a part of a very unique experience that, that you're not going to get on every, every other campus. 
Very good. And, and so when we look out to our student athletes, to our fans, parents, alumni, all of whom are probably listening or watching, watching this podcast, is there a general message that you would like to send to them as we navigate this fall and this winter and, and look forward to sports returning this spring and beyond? Yeah, maybe it would be that how important it is to to me as a president and to the university, I think it's a critical element of what we offer. It's foundational to our future. And so with that being said, and some of the conditions that we're, you know, we're navigating through now, I, I think it's important every, everyone understands that it's about how do we um, overcome these challenges and deliver a superior student experience despite that, that we can continue to build on and recruit into. I just think that that's such a, a big part of the liberal arts education and the, the development of all our students. You know, athletics plays such a key role in that. That um, that is something we're gonna we need to invest more in, um, promote more. I think and engage our alumni maybe more um, closely with our our current teams and our current um, coaching network to to really get our message out and, and expand our, our recruiting. Um, when I look at the, um, you know, if we're going to recruit in, say, 700 um, students, I would like to see two to 300 of them being athletes, just because that's so foundational to the development of the, of the success of our, of our students. Well, President Kaufman, it's been an absolute pleasure in taking the first steps and getting to know you as a professional and as a leader of our institution. And I feel that we've only really scratched the surface of who you are and what your vision is. So perhaps whether it be about sports, life, or business and capital, may we even be able to invite you back for future episodes? Oh, I, uh, Ryan, I appreciate that. I, I would love that. You know, my, in my first 90 days, I spent so much time looking at strategy and structure. I'm just reaching the point now where I can start um, focusing on relationships. And I'm actually, I'm talking with Dixie this afternoon. I want to meet with her and the coaches. And so now I'm near the point where I can start um, getting to know everybody and, and uh, developing the trust at, um, you know, at a, at a coaching level and get to know each other better. So I'm really looking forward to that. And, um, and maybe discussions like this will help. Uh, help my introduction and, and build on that. So thank well, you. We, cer we, we certainly look forward to that. And we certainly look forward to having you attend some Capital Athletic events in the future when we can have that happen. But until that time, again, thank you so much for your time and, and wishing you safety and wellness as we continue to take the Cap Fam forward. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. All right. This has been Interim President of Capital University, Dave Kaufman, as we wrap up this episode of Forward Capital Crusaders.